All right, what's up, family? It's Coach Josh here again with a live Q&A with yours truly. Hope y'all are doing exceptionally well. Won't be before you guys too long. Kind of felt impressed to come on here live. So I'm going to give everyone who's going to join me live for tonight's session an opportunity to come on in. So I'm going to give them an opportunity to come in. And for those who are watching me for the very first time, I want to say thank you so much for watching. If you watch this video, like, man, this guy, I like what he's saying, and his, and his, what he's saying is bear with me with the spirit inside of me. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Hit the bell, all that good stuff, because I love to have you part of my community. But for those who's been rocking with me for a mighty long time, whether it's from 12 years ago or two weeks ago that you've been a subscriber or 20 minutes ago, I want to say thank you so much for pressing that subscribe button and, and seeing the value in this channel. Yes, I'm got a tie and shirt on. Just got back from church and spending time with family a little bit, um, but I felt led to do a video. So I'm going to give you all an opportunity to come and give me some questions, and then uh, I'll be out y'all away in about 20, 25 minutes. Good evening, Janine, Connor. What's going on? Oh, man. Here they go. Hello from the Philippines. Thank you, Janine Travels. Thank you for watching. Janine Connor, good evening. Hey, coach. I'm first. Welcome. We're glad to have you. Night, coach. Hey, Nadell. What's going on? Hello, Mimi. Uh, Nikik. Neek, Neek, my bad. Hi, Coach Josh. Hello, Madame. Uh, Jenny Travis, I can't believe I'm first. Hi, this is how much I believe in you. I'm so glad that you're here. It's an honor, man. P hey, bro, I got you, man. Please forgive me, man. The family got me, man. And we're going to make sure we get that coaching session, man. I got you, family. I'll make sure we get it some. Maybe tom well, tomorrow I'm full, too. Tuesday I'm full. Let's try for Wednesday, man. I'll make sure I email you after this. And if you don't hear from me by tomorrow, hit me up. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you, Arissa. Fun with Tosh says, what do you think? Here we go. What do you think about talking to someone who once rejected you? Well, um, the good thing about it is, is that uh, rejection can be for your protection. Uh, rejection kind of gives you insight of what God has projected for you. Um, and what you think about that person is realizing that um, in life, you elevate in life, you outgrow people. And uh, but when you comes to talking with that person, it just depends if it's family and someone that's kind of with you, with you as far as blood, flesh and blood. And you kind of got to deal with them, then be cordial, um, determine your distance, determine your interaction with them. But if it's someone that you used to talk to in regards to relationship, just keep it moving. Because sometimes people will reject you and God got them out your life and then got you in a healing place. And then all of a sudden they realize, man, why did I even leave that person? But it's best for you to just keep that person outside of y'all's, what y'all used to have. Because sometimes people will, will will leave you for someone else. And then when they spent time with that person and they realize, oh, you was actually better than them. And they should have real they should have recognized your value before they even thought about rejecting you. So what do you think about talking to someone who wants to reject you? Keep it moving. I wouldn't even waste your time. And first off, don't waste your time with anyone, especially in a relationship with someone that God doesn't have for you. Can God bring someone back that's meant for you? Cool. That's between you and God. But my advice to you is. Uh, uh, they rejected you, uh, and you, after that rejection, you probably found a new focus. So my advice is you stay focused, stay going forward, and be cordial, be nice, but don't open no doors of, of fellowship. Don't open no doors of, of friendship. Don't open any other doors because sometimes people got to learn. <clears throat> sometimes some people got to learn that, uh, and that's why I don't mind being people's lessons. I tell people all the time, um, don't uh, – don't, um, um, uh, block somebody else learning from a lesson. You may have to be their lesson. And what I mean by that is, if they rejected you and they think they could just come back to you, don't you should have it elevated in your self esteem to a place where you say, you know, I'm not just gonna let you back in my life. What you should do then is say, you know what, you know what, uh, uh, the relationship is different now, friendship is different right now. I'm nice, I'm cordial, but you cannot give off the impression they could just leave you and then come back to you and then they and then every the benefit's still the same. No, 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 no. Because what happens is you let them back in your life, they'll leave you again. But it, but what you have to do is, is teach them how to treat the next person, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, rejection leads to your protection. Uh, and, and what you should do in the meantime is elevate your self-esteem in Christ, understand who you are in him, and keep it moving. What's going on, fam? Hey, coach, what are ways to move on from a girl and to stop thinking about her? First of all, you got to uh, write down the core reason why she is consuming your mind. And what I mean by that, fam, is to uh, really assess the, the strength of the tie. Um, if y'all dated for years, you got to be honest with yourself. Sometimes we we want to treat the symptoms, but we never get to the source problem. So the source to the reason why you may still be thinking about her could be some insecurities, could be some inadequacies, could be some low self-esteem, could be some abandonment. My root issue to a lot of the issues that was in my life, the root issue was abandonment. And when I dealt with the abandonment issue, 
contentment birth, self-esteem grew. A lot of things began to dissipate. Lust issues began to fall away because abandonment and insecurities was the root reason why I was still tied to certain people, still tied to certain things. And so the best way to move on is to realize uh, um, what do I have my roots in now? Because it's hard to move on when your roots are in abandonment, when your roots are in insecurities, and when your roots are in inadequacy. So what you have to do is, Holy Spirit, reveal to me the root reason why I'm still um, I'm thinking about her. And then the Holy Spirit will reveal to you, I uh, remember what, you, what happened between you and your pops, what happened to you between you and your mom, or what may have happened to you, whatever, in your formative years of life. And then you'll be like, wow, that's the root reason why I'm still hanging on. Because even if you get over her, you'll get under someone else, you'll get attached to someone else, and then those same things will occur again. And so what are the ways to move from a girl and st to stop thinking about her? Is to uh, is to examine and audit your thoughts. What are you thinking? So what I would do, fam, is write those thoughts on paper, write down the facts between you and her. And now if you made a mistake and you lost her and you may feel like it was my fault, coach, and I lost her and I can't stop thinking about her because I made a mistake, that's when you forgive yourself and say, you know what? Hey, I made a mistake, but I'm going to go forward because whoever God has for me is for me. For uh, The Bible says, if any man or woman be in Christ, they are a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things become new. So it doesn't matter if you hurt her feelings, you can't stop thinking about her. You got to forgive yourself and move forward. So whatever the story is and the nuances are, um, um, the Holy Spirit will show you the foundation of it all. And then once you allow him to solve the source, you'll start seeing those symptoms fade. But practically, I would write those thoughts down. I would really examine them. And so when you see thoughts on paper, you'll be able to say, you know what? I'm wasting my time thinking about this. Maybe she wasn't even really all that because sometimes when emotions are in your heart, and, and you don't write down who she really is on paper, because when you see who she is really on paper, you'd be like, wow, that's why we're not together. But if you made the mistake and you feel like I, I lost her because of my own issue, forgive yourself, move forward and write down the lessons you can learn from that relationship and say, OK, the next girl, that the, the woman that God has for me, I'm going to move differently. And, and wins and lessons will keep you from feeling like a loser. When you understand that you make that you will make mistakes, look at it as wins and lessons so that you won't feel like you a loser in life. And so you got to start thinking new thoughts, my friend. Start thinking new thoughts. I'll start thinking about your purpose. Uh, <clears throat> start thinking about the book. Start thinking about the ideas. Start thinking about the things that God wants you to work on. And over time, as you patch up those wounds, as the Holy Spirit patches those wounds and you are producing, you'll be like, I forgot who she even was. And that's how you do it, fam. I hope that helped. But make sure you hit me up, bro, so we can get to it on Wednesday. Wednesday, I'm, I'm pretty open. As of now, Wednesday, I should be good. We can get that coaching session going. And uh, but tomorrow I'm full. Um, when, Tuesday I'm definitely full. But Wednesday I have a little opening, man. We'll make it happen. Lenny says, "How do you refrain from being jealous of others and instead of happy for them?" Um, you just gotta look at the root reason. Um, you have to be understand that number two things. One of two things. If that's God blessing them, you gotta rejoice because you're in the same line, right? If you're in the same line as that person. It doesn't matter when you get it. Just be glad you're in the right line to receive it. And what I would do then is say, OK, I, I celebrate my brother and sister because you know what? I, I get it. I'm going to experience that one day. And or on the flip side, you have to also realize that not all relationships are put together by God. And so so sometimes you got to just look at situations logically and look at. No, don't even say I won't even say the word logically, spiritually the spiritual logic angle of it. You see what I'm saying? Then you will be able to see, you know what? Uh, first off, this is not even worth my time envying because number one, I don't even know if that's from God. Number two, I, I need to rejoice that, you know, my time will come. Now, the real root issue is you got to look at yourself and say, is there any self-hate? Is there any um, insecurities? Is there any inadequacies in your heart? Because usually those type of issues, root issues, um, leads to um, comparison, leads to envy, leads to jealousy. And you have to examine jealousy <clears throat> because when you see something in front of you, your heart won't lie. You can't fake happy for somebody. You know, now you can fake it on the outside, but you know where your heart is. And that's when you grab your heart at the moment and say, nope, I can't let, I can't feel this way longer. I got to deal with the root issue of this because it don't matter how many couples come your way. Even when you find your man, you're going to still have it in your heart. Well, my relationship ain't like theirs. I envy how he does that for her because you never dealt with that root issue. You will actually have what you always quote unquote wanted in a relationship and still not be content because you never dealt with the stuff that was in the basement of your heart. 
And so what I would do is, is that's what I do. Anytime I feel any kind of way outside of how I should feel about situation, I grab my heart and I audit it. Okay, Josh, why did you feel that way? Why are you even upset about that? Why are you consuming yourself about that? And then my heart will, what the issue is, will rise to the surface. And I'm like, yep, Josh, that's an insecurity, Josh. Deal with that. Because that would be the very thing that keeps you from being successful. So how do you refrain from being jealous of others instead of being happy for them? It's to realize that you don't even know if they are even happy. So I will just exclude them. I will take them out of the equation and say, you know what? Good for them. Hopefully it's from God. Now that's done with. Now you got to look at your heart and say, you know what? What is the root reason? Is it because I'm getting older as a woman? Is it because uh, it seems like all my friends are getting somebody and not me? You have to also realize sometimes the last, the Bible says the first shall be last and last shall be first. I don't mind being last because you learn so much about being last. Sometimes those who are last, last longer. And so sometimes when you look at those who rush first the relationship first and they just rush, 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 they got there first, but they finished last. And you have a lot of people that had a, a got married, then got divorced and you still on your journey. And so what that means is they got to relationship first, but they end up being last because they didn't learn too much. But when you're last and you're watching everybody else get in relationship, learn from that. Learn about yourself. Learn your heart. Because you want to get to a place where you can look at someone and get a relationship and be genuinely happy for them. And that's a mind renewal. You got to deal with the Holy Spirit that is going to show you the root reason why you feel that way. And then you can then say, you know what? Holy Spirit, renew my mind on that. That's when you go to the word of God and you say, okay, what does the word of God say about insecurities? What does the word of God say about jealousy? What does the word of God say about envy? What does the word of God say about celebrating others? And then meditate on those scripts so that you can become those scriptures. And then over time, you'll really begin to be more focused on your life. And you'll be like, you know what? I'm not going to worry about who got somebody. I'm going to make sure I prepare myself to be that somebody that that, no, that other person needs. And that's what keep your mind off of the relationship because you'll realize I'm not even ready for that. And chances are they might not even be ready for that. Hope to help. <clears throat> Enoch says, hey, coach, much love to you, brother. Much love to you, fam. Thank y'all for joining me. Divine 15 says, hey, coach, I really would like to get a tattoo because I feel like it would enhance my appearance. Is it wrong for me to do that? Great question. Uh, my advice on tattoos is this. Your skin is your largest organ. And, and I, if you wouldn't want a tattoo on your heart, why would you want to? Why would if you wouldn't want ink on your heart? Why would you want ink on your skin, especially when um, um, there's pores and, and, and it affects the bloodstream? See, you got to think deeper than just what it is you got to treat your skin like it is your largest organ that's just my point of view uh, but do i think tattoos are are not good uh, in my honest opinion you can take it to the bank or you can just take it you can go through the drive through and keep going but my, my thing is i just wouldn't do it i don't think it's wise first off um you all let me just before i give my opinion let's go down this logical path number one the real question is why do you want the tattoo if you think it's going to enhance your appearance that's not a good reason to get a tattoo anything to enhance your appearance you got to ask yourself, why do I want to enhance my appearance? Do I do I not love myself? Do I not think I'm attractive? Because the only person you need to enhance your beauty is Christ. Because when you have Christ in your life, you have you become internally beautiful, which then goes through the skin and make you and give you a countenance that makes you even more attractive, right? And so when you think about that, you'll but all I really need is the fruits of the spirit to enhance me to make me more attractive. Um, a fellowship with the Father makes me more attractive. Uh, gives me more faith makes me more um, 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 whatever it is. But if you say to enhance my appearance, a tattoo is only going to, then you're going to be like, you know what? Uh, well, she looks cuter with 15 tattoos. See, the thing is, anything you desire, if you don't have limits, you, 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 you're going to just going to be unlimited with it. <clears throat> but I think logically, we just got to be wise about what we put on our skin. It, like for me, I can't even, I can't even use soap. Just think about this. I can't even use soap with gluten in it because it causes eczema. So if soap like that causes skin reactions and it affects the, uh, the, uh, um, uh, uh, ex uh, the skin in my body, what does a tattoo do? And so what I was saying is you just got to respect your skin, respect your body. And um, I just don't think it's wise. Um, uh, the Bible says many things, uh, uh, things may be lawful for you, but they may not be beneficial. Uh, but the root reason is to will reveal something darker and deeper when you realize the tattoo is just a symptom of something deeper. 
Oh, why do you think these people are portrayed before us? Where did the sleeves come from? Where do all these things come from? Now it's getting people inking their bodies up. We don't know 20, 30 years from now, they're going to be talking about, hey man, tattoos is causing this in people's bodies. And so, um, and so is it, is it, is it, is it, is it lawful? Yeah. You can go out there and get a tattoo. I don't think you're not gonna go to hell because of a tattoo. Definitely not going to hell because of a tattoo, but you got to just be wise. Your skin is your largest organ. You got, that's your largest organ, yo. And so you just got to be very careful what you do on your skin because your skin is an organ. It's a living organism. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like it's sucking in whatever, whatever you, whatever you put on it is sucking into those pores. You just got to think deeper and spiritual and not and not get so caught up in the trends of the time. But the root reason will show you uh, uh, um, a, a dark reason on why you want something else. And if you needed to enhance your appearance, I, I, I wouldn't even do it. So uh, um, I just wouldn't do it. The, what's going to enhance your appearance are the fruits of the spirit, my friend. Um, so is it wrong? Who am I to say? I'm not God, but I I, I kind of lean more towards it being wrong. Just simple. That's just my opinion. Because everybody got ideas and thoughts about tattoos. But people don't think, they just think of, they get so uh, back and forth legalistic about it. Uh, the free people fight the legalistic people and legalistic people fight the free people. I just use common sense. Your skin's an organ. And you're going to get somebody to put ink on your body. I can't even have gluten in my body. What's in the ink? You know what I'm saying? What's in the ink that they use? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, what are the side effects of tattoos? What does the ink get into the bloodstream? You got to ask those kind of questions because when you live for the moment and you look to look better, then then you don't know what's sinister with the with the objective that you're trying to reach towards, and you don't know what it's doing to the body, like uh, EMFs with the phones. I'm getting a phone case right now. I'm getting a flip phone. Like, I'm um, you know, with these five G towers, all this kind of stuff, like. Cool. I don't need high speed in it like that. I don't need high speed for that. If it's going, if stuff's going to affect my organs. So what I'm saying is, just because everybody wants faster, this doesn't mean, hey, I care more about my body and longevity. To make sure this vessel is strong enough to fulfill its overall purpose. So that's what you got to think about. Uh, what will this thing do to my health and my overall whatever? Because one tattoo leads to two, then two leads to four, then four leads to eight, then eight leads to 16. And then you got a sleeve because you got caught up in the moment and then you're 47 years old, tatted up. So that's just my opinion. But hey, coach old school, you know, you know it is what it is. <laughs> but I just, it just don't make sense to me. Jody Real says, should we be open to dating? Uh, uh Should we be open to date anyone regardless of lifestyle? My friends say I'm judging certain women because I don't want to date them because of their lifestyle, stripper, sexual. Well, listen, we live in a world that's very sensitive. And um, <clears throat> and your pre what you decide, what I would do is don't be vocal about like. Sometimes when you put something out there, observe the response of your people around you, because the response of the people around you should, will let you know if this is the circle you should be around or not. Right. And so if you are saying this in regards to your friends and your friends, and see, listen, let me tell you something about coach. If you are not at the level of my mind spiritually, I can't trust you. I love you, but I cannot trust you. I can't trust your outlook. I can't trust your perspective because I need you to be on the same wavelength of me. So if I catch slip, you will be you will be able to bring me back up. If you beneath me and what I mean by beneath me, I'm talking about if you're not mature enough spiritually, you're not able to discern. That's why I drive everywhere. I can't trust your I can't trust certain people's discernment behind the wheel. See what I'm saying? I, I'm too. When you know that you're valuable, you don't mind changing friends. Because you recognize their words. I can't have you around because your words will affect me. Your mindset will affect me. So sometimes you got to say, you know what? If if I say this and it don't make sense to them that they get mad at me because I choose to have a preference. Then it might be time to just say, you know what? Uh, maybe I'm outgrowing this circle, my friend. Um, but uh, to your first question, no, man. Can two walk together lest they be agreed? Because well, yeah, let me tell you something, fam. A woman comes with more than just an attractive body. I tell men this all the time. Men, <clears throat> women, men come with more than just a financial portfolio. Whatever you're attracted to, that person comes with more than just what you're attracted to. And so what, thank you so much for giving. I really appreciate that. Uh, but what people fail to realize is that, 
oh, well, uh, well, maybe I can help her. No, no, no. You've got to be equally yoked, man. Because when you unequally yoke with someone and they're still growing and you've already grown to that level and y'all start dating, the whole metaphor about that cow, the calves, is that it breaks the neck of the stronger calf. When you unequally yoke, you over there progressing. And not only are you pulling your weight, you're also pulling the weight of the girl or if you're a girl, the guy and the carriage. And all of a sudden now it breaks the neck of the calf. So you're being suffocated trying to help them. And that's why it's just best to be alone and breathe than to be with somebody else suffocating. It's that simple. Whoever God brings along you is not going to be perfect, but y'all going to be at a maturity level that's able to manage whatever the relationship. Now, are y'all going to still grow in errors? Of course, but there's a baseline um, requirements of manageability that, that y'all both will have. Is it perfect maturity? No, but there's a basic management ability that y'all going to grow so y'all able to at least start off together at an equal weight. And so if they're judging you, you just got to say, you know what, like for me, bro, I don't voice my opinion everywhere. Nobody knows my political views. Nobody really knows a lot of my views because I know People just sensitive. People just easily triggered. And if I say certain things they don't agree with, they don't even want to take time to listen. And so that's why I learned to just be um, swift, to, uh, slow to speak. Because if I'm slow to speak, I end up being slow to wrath. <laughs> because if I speak and people start talking crazy and questioning my intelligence, and I know my intelligence is sound spiritually, then I'm gonna I'm gonna chop you I'm gonna chop you down with this intellectualism, and then now I'm a back and forth. And, the, and we all heard the saying: two people arguing from a distance both look like fools. And so what you got to do is say, you know what? Maybe this ain't my friends no more. Maybe these, maybe I'm outgrowing these friendships. And they want strippers because they want the body. But women come with more than just their body. You know, they come with the frame of mind. They come with the emotional, whether it's emotional instability or emotional stability. Some of them got daddy issues. And there's a there's a lot that comes with men and just what they can provide. Some men still got lust issues. So what I'm saying is you got to be able to say, you know what? Y'all can get with them strippers if you want. You can get with women like that all you want. Instagram, whatever you want, whatever you want. It could be a girl that's in a church looking holy, but she still got holes in her life. Cool. But as far as me and my life, I'm waiting on the Lord. So you might want to start questioning those group of friends, man. Maybe outgrowing them. Thoughts on manifesting as far as demons? Oh, man, they're manifesting as we speak, man. <laughs> All this stuff that's going around us is demons manifesting. It's because um, they're, they're manifesting more in regions where the church is distracted. Simple as that. Um, a lot of these major cities, look at the churches. Anytime you see any type of civil unrest, examine the churches in that city. Because we're the ones that are supposed to be handling this thing. We're supposed to be the ones walking in dominion, right? And so if you start seeing a lot of unrest, a lot of... See, that's why even in my city, Charlotte, I can tell there's been a principality change. I, I can already tell. It ain't the same city like I was brought up. There has been a change of a principality over my own city. And most people aren't even spiritual enough to recognize, has there been a new sheriff in town? Is there a new principality in town? See, I'm I'm at a place where I don't see things in the natural. I say, you know what? Back. And the people was like, why don't you go downtown? I'm like, bro, I don't even got a squad that's even ready to get busy. I ain't about to go downtown and, and do spiritual warfare by myself. Me and my wife, I ain't done. It takes a team. It takes a group. And I can already know, okay, for me, for I don't, I'm not afraid of a principal. I ain't afraid of demons. I know they know my name. No, When I went to Nigeria, man, when I went to Nigeria for the first time, I met my spiritual mom. She was like, um, they know you over there. And so when I flew in, when I flew into the region of Nigeria, my heart was beating fast. I felt, I mean, it was all types of type of warfare. And I was young back then. So I was 24 years old. And when I got into my hotel rooms, my ceiling fans spinning on fast, lights flickering. I had to leave Nigeria early because I was going to get kidnapped. Like people don't know that about my story, but God kept me. And I'm glad he exposed me that because I understand regions. I understand principalities. I understand demonology. I understand who I am in Christ. So that's why I'm not stupid enough. The Bible says, sit down and count the cost. You see what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is that demons manifest um, because their time is short and they're trying to gather as many people as possible to go to hell with them. So I don't know if that's what you wanted me to talk about. <laughs> Thoughts on manifesting. Um, but um, um, yeah, we in that time. It's darkness, man. And so y'all got to, we got to understand who we are in Christ, understand our authority and um, and know that we are called um, to do greater works. 
um, casting out demons is a part of them, but nobody wants to do that. That's dirty business. Nobody want to do that. Nobody want, nobody want them demonic smoke. But you understand you got a bigger cannon than they do. But people don't realize who they are. They just want to be um, coddled. They, a lot of Christians just want to be, oh, we're just going to make like, no, we're supposed to clack, clack, shoot them things back at them and take over cities and take over regions. Um, but that's what coach is on. Coach ain't on that. Let me just rock y'all to sleep. I want to equip y'all for war. Simple as that, my friends. But it's uh, it's go time. Janine Connor says, Coach, how can you break it off with a man gently so he doesn't get offended? Great question. Um, honesty. I, I like I told uh, my niece, and I, I'll tell any young lady, it's better to give a man a paper cut than a knife in the back or the knife in the chest. Um, so this is how you practically do it. Um, sometimes you can do it as gently as possible, but because of their idolatry of you, because of their lust in them, um, they're going to be offended. We live in a gener- we live in a culture right now that that um, uh, men they don't they emotionally all over the place. So what I would do is first off, before you even talk to that person, uh, um, go to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, how um, how should I approach this? Or say, Holy Spirit, can you create an opportunity, a doorway for me to peaceably tell my brother that I'm not interested and that we should go for it? The best way the Holy Spirit will lead you is to number one, be humble. Humble means, you know what, you know, you know what? I just want to say, Tyrone, it's, I apologize for um, not being up front with you. Um, right now, I'm just in a space in my life where this is just not it for me. I'm not looking for anyone. I don't want you to think that I, I don't want you to think that this is an open door for you later. Um, um, at this juncture in my life, I'm just not interested in anyone. Um, and I want to invest my time in other places. I think you're an amazing young man. Do the ch- spicy chicken sandwich. This will get you, this will get you through most cases. Um, you can say Tyrone, man, I can, I can, uh, don't say, can we talk? Cause you already know what's going to happen. Dude, well, maybe you have to, maybe I have to, whatever. Just say Tyrone. Hey man, you're an amazing guy. You really are. And um, and I, I I like this about you. I think you, I think you got a great future. I think God has a purpose for you. Um, but right now in my life, this is just not for me. Um, right now I feel uh like I need to seek God more. I, I need to pursue my purpose more. Um, and I think that there's a woman right now. If you're ready to pursue a woman right now, if you feel if you feel ready by God to pursue a young lady, by all means go back out there, man. But right now, I just I just want to be a good fit for you. Um, because right now I'm focused. I need to grow in some areas. This doesn't mean come check on me later. Um, this doesn't mean that this is an open door for later. Um, uh, but right now I I probably shouldn't have entertained you this far. And it's, I apologize if I gave you the wrong impressions and I apologize for 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 even opening this door. Um, but you're an amazing guy. I really think you are. And there's a woman out there that deserves your time right now. Right now, I'm just as better to use my time in a better service. Do something like that and you'll be good. But if he gets offended by that, then a good guy will be disappointed. But a guy who wanted you, you'll start seeing some manifestations. <laughs> you and so I do it in a public place, and that's why ladies going forward, you just got to be wise out here. People crazy, man. Back in my day, back in my day, but literally back in my day, where well, there was no social media. It, it, but now people are crazy, man. And so ladies going forward, you got to be okay with your singleness, and you got to be okay that when a guy comes, you stop it. Then don't try to see if this is the one. No, no, just let leave it. Alone, you know what I'm saying? And don't if you know you're not interested, you know, like that, they're just like, you know, we, we can't do this. I'm sorry. Um, but if he gets offended, he gets offended. But when you're led by the spirit of God into it, and you go to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, can you open up an opportunity for me um to tell Tyrone how I feel? Then the Holy Spirit will go before you, make a crooked place straight, and then he'll create an environment where it will be peaceful, and you'll know exactly what to say, and you'll bow out and be out and be good. Do it through the Holy Spirit, though, because he'll he'll make your way prosperous. He'll uh, make your path straight. And then you will have the right conversation with Tyrone, even though his name's not Tyrone. Just Tyrone's the theme of this month. I might start switching the name up. Maybe next month uh, it'll be um, Jamal. I'm from, <laughs> Nick, I'm from Ohio. Thank you for watching. G. Noel, what's going on, fam? Hello, coach. What's going on, Sipper? Ka- uh, Kawanli, what's going on? Enoch says, hey, coach, how do I get rid of the feelings that I'm not close to to?" Uh, to uh, that I'm not close to God and that God hasn't drawn close to me. I be praying, but that but that feeling is always on and off. 
Um, you got to look at it like this, man. Love is factual. Love has nothing to do with feelings. Love is logical first. And the, lo- the, the, the logic of love will limit the feelings. See, I used to be the same way with God. I'm like, I don't feel his presence. I don't feel that he's near. That's the human standpoint. That's an emotional connection with God. But when you understand the biblical truths in regards to your adoption, and you really understand um, the layers of salvation and what comes with that and who you are to God now as a son or daughter, many of us, we grew up fatherless or we grew up with poor fathers or or, or we grew up with uh, two good fathers. They just too good. What I mean by that, they probably overly did their fathering. And so what happens is from our uh, um, experience with our fathers, we have a a poor worldview of how we see God, right? But God, you have to understand that when your mind understands who you are in Christ and what Christ did for you in regards to give you access to the Father, then it will limit your type of feelings. I don't have to, it don't matter what mistake I made, I know who I am to Christ. I have amnesia from my last sin. No matter what I've done, I move because I know I'm adopted. I know I'm accepted by him. I know that he foreknew this mistake was going to happen and he has a lesson for me to learn from it. And so how do you get rid of the feelings? You got to find the facts of your fellowship, find the facts of the fellowship and find the facts of your father. That means understanding your attri- his attributes, because the more you understand the heavenly father, the more you understand him, the more you get to know him, the more your feelings will subside because you have understanding of his love towards you. You have some degree of understanding of his patience towards you. You have an understanding that of his chastening and pruning of you so that because next you're going to go through the pruning phase and you're going to feel like God is too harsh. You're going to feel like, oh, I've said, but you, but when you understand that pruning is a part of the believer's path, then you'll be, oh, then your feelings will kind of be at ease. Your feelings will be at ease because you factually understand the fundamentals of the faith and you factually understand the attributes of the father and your feelings will then follow those factual understandings. God is there. You, Your mind is what's causing you to think of him outside of his character. That's caused you to feel negative feelings because we're treating him from a, from a, from an understanding that's not mature. And I've been there. So God is there. He loves you. He wants to be close to you. You just got to now assess your mind state and say, you know what? Am I, do I really have the right understanding of who this God is? Or have I created a graven image or has a graven image been engrafted in my mind from false teachers that's caused me to think of God in a certain kind of way, whether he's a a bad, hateful father that just sends lightning down or a big mama type of God that always, no matter what you do, come get some biscuits and eggs, but there's no pruning and no chastening. But when you go to the word, the Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So what I would do is it start under first. I would go to Google and type in um, attributes of God and start meditating on that. My friend, get to know him and then your feelings will follow your factual understanding of who the father is and how he wants to reveal himself to you. Hope that helps. Got time for maybe two more and I'm done. Uh, that, OK, Mimi says dad passed away six months ago. I understand my my. My condolences. Mom wants to get remarried. Whoa. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> That's why I got to read the. Okay. Dad passed away six months ago. Mom wants to get remarried, but I'm having trouble accepting another father in my life. What should I do? Mimi, um, you have age now. Now it's time to kind of separate yourself um, from the decisions and actions of others, and especially those in family. Uh, when you begin to understand the exclusivity of the relationship that God wants to have for you, you will begin to separate yourselves from the poor decisions or the proper decisions of others and how you may feel about them. Uh, because you have to understand if you do not detach yourself, I'm not sitting there saying detach yourself like I don't got to do it, y'all. We're talking about detaching strong feelings. Like it doesn't matter what happens to, it doesn't matter what my mom decides to do. It doesn't matter what my whoever in my life decides to do. I got to keep God above everybody, because if I if my mom is higher to me than God is, if my wife is higher to me than God is, if my dad is higher to me than God is, then their decision will always affect me. Right. So right now you got to start developing a distance in regards to dependency and start developing your own relationship with God so that you can make God superior to anyone so that you'll still love your mom, but you're not so attached by decisions. And in regards to accepting another man in life, I don't know what happened between your dad and your mom and how, and the reasons why she wants to remarry another guy already. Uh, oh, she wants to get remarried. Okay. Um, may, uh, um, 
We never know what went down between your mom and dad. Maybe you know the nuances. Um, but your mom is human too. And and maybe her and Pops wasn't cool. I don't know the story, but maybe she's like down the road. I would like to, whoop, whoop, you know what I'm saying, get married again. And that's cool. Um, but now that you notice that, you know, you already healing, you're healing now because I lost your dad, I will just keep focusing on healing. I will, I will dive deep into getting to know God a little bit more. I will begin, I will continuously process my emotions that when you have those tough moments, you vent and you process so that you can keep those, so you can have fresh feelings and not toxic feelings, right? Because what we don't want to happen is that because of the loss of your father, you, you don't heal from that. And then that callousness builds. And then when your mom moves on and she healed from the passing of her husband and she wants somebody else, you still got that callous wounded in your heart. So what you have to do is continue to keep that wound before God, keep that wound healed, flesh it out so that you can have a uh, replace those toxic feelings with God's love, God's joy, God's wisdom. And so, that, so those, those, those rivers of the spirit of God, those things will begin to bear the fruit inside of you so that you'll be able to go forward and not build a strong uh, wound or callousness in your heart to where you... Th- Everything your mom does, you affect it. Or because of what happened to your dad, you still affect it. Because actually, uh, uh, if your father was saved, he's he will tell you right now. If he's in heaven right now, he will tell you right now, baby girl, go forward. Because I'm telling you, no matter how much your dad loves you, if he died as a believer in Christ, he is his joy is for you to go forward and learn from your what you've gotten from him and heal. Because if you don't heal, then 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 you're not going to be able to really feel uh, and experience what God has for you in a genuine, tangible way. And that's just my honest uh, uh, um, uh, delivery with condolences in mind, with understanding in mind how difficult all of this is for you. And that's why I would kind of probably start journaling. I will start processing your feelings. I would just really just start doing certain things right now that will really kind of help keep those feelings flushing out of you and not becoming hard and that you can't go forward in life. Hope they help me, me. Um, T-Mac says, how do I start coaching as well? Great question, man. Well, I started coaching um, from a person that posted a comment under one of my videos like, man, 10 years ago. And it was like, man, you should be a life coach. Back then, life coaching wasn't as popular as it was now. But, you know, I didn't have a degree and I was like, you know what? I don't want to just be I want I want to create a profession where I'm actually able to genuinely, truly coach people and create a revenue stream. And so that's what I did. And what I would do is I would research. Um, there's some uh, the Christian Coach Institute is the coaching um, uh, program that I went through. And she's amazing. Um, the lady that runs that is just amazing, man. They were so good to me. Her and her husband, uh, Mr. Fletcher. And she was just amazing, man. And uh, and I would go to Christian Coach Institute. If you want to learn more about the coaching path I took and then learn about coaching, maybe take the course with her, maybe just do some research, but get your certification so you won't be looking so people can really see that you legit and, uh, and, uh, and really help people go forward in life. But Christian Coach Institute is the company that I went through to get my certification. Great people teach you about Christian coaching. Um, but they won't limit you to Christian coaching if you don't want it. It's coaching, just period. And then you'll discover your niche. You discover your audience, who you want to help. Like for me, I do worksheets. I, I, I have my own style of helping people kind of progress through steps. And then you'll be good, fam. That, I think you should go for it. If the Holy Spirit is leading you, go for it, man. Start with Christian Coach Institute. Look on her site. She probably got some descriptive um, talking points that would kind of help you understand what coaching is and whatnot. And uh, tell her that Coach Josh, Josh Wesley sent you. And she'll be like, oh, I know Joshua. I know coach. Hope they help. But I've been doing it for 10 years. Um, but that's how you start. Start by informing yourself. <clears throat> don't just go out there and start coaching people because you don't want to find yourself in situations where you just got to know what, what liabilities you have and uh, what verbiage you got to have in regards to uh, email me, T-Mac. I'll send you my form so you kind of see how my forms look. Um, send me an email and just put uh, coaching forms. Ask your question online. And if you like, I always tell me if you don't hear from me in two days, because man, I get emails, I get a ton of them. Remind me, just every two days you don't hear from me, just keep, just send me another email, just send me another, send me the same email, because I want to hold my word to anyone that has that I've told to do that. <clears throat> and I'll see you my coaching forms, and you'll be able to say, oh, okay, that's cool, and you'll see whether or not you want to do it or not. L- uh, last one, and I'm done. 
Charlene says, went on a date and he didn't pay for anything, but asked me, is that a, that's a bad thing. Keep it moving. The only time you pay for something. Oh, let me make sure I got a super chat. Thank you so much. Bless you, Coach Joshua, and your family. Your work been such a blessing. I'm so glad. Thank you so much. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. If a man doesn't pay, that ain't the right way. A man should at least offer. Now, if he went offering, because you understand, you understand your time is valuable. And, and ladies have to understand the value of their time and that the man has to pursue you at the value of your time. And for those who have purpose and have families and have business, they have to pay for the level of that time because that time calls. That time calls. You see what I'm saying? So if anybody wants my time now, and, and, I, and, I, and no matter how deeply my heart doesn't want to charge people for coaching, but you're taking time away from my family, you're taking time away from my books, you're taking time from other revenue stream. So I have to charge for my time because I've increased in value to other people who, de who deserves that time for free. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is, is that uh, and, and for me, what I'm even doing now with my custom coaching is a blessing because most people charge $150 an hour. Some people charge $250 an hour. And but but I but I found the common ground where I'm able to bless others by customizing coaching sessions for them. And if you want one on one coach, you can do that on my website. I am unplugged .com. But what I'm saying is my time has become valuable because of the people that that I am truly valuable to. All right. And so what I'm saying is that if a man asks you out and doesn't want to pay, he, he has no liability. I mean, there's no risk. He's like, OK, cool. I took her from a place of focus to be that's selfish. A man should have a respect for your time enough. I'm old school. A man should have enough respect for your time to say, you know what, um, to at least on the first few conversations. What's your favorite restaurant? What do you like to do? What do you like to eat? You know, what's your favorite restaurant? And then he'll be able to say, OK, I want to take her at the place that's at her value. You know what I'm saying? So what he'll say is we'll keep talking on the phone. Maybe we'll do some group sessions. Maybe we'll go or whatever. But a man will be man will ask questions like, what do you like? And then he'll check his pockets and say, OK, I'm not saying they're saying that you be you. You break the man's pockets, but a man should be able to say, you know what? That's the caliber of woman I'm dealing with. Wow. She she's really invested. I would it would be selfish of me to pull her time and then ask her to pay for the time I took from her. <clears throat> no, I will bounce peace deuces because you want free time. You get what I mean? I don't want you to think that a man has to pay for your time, but that's what I mean by your time. You should have so much value of your time that you're not going to waste your time with a guy who's going to make you pay for your time that he's taking you away from. So you went on a date and he that quote unquote, you went on a date. He didn't date, he didn't pay for anything, but ask me out. Is that a that's a bad thing? He didn't pay for nothing. He didn't uh, my thing is he, he didn't offer to pay. If he didn't offer to pay, then that man has been taught the wrong way. Because a man should be able to say, you know what? I'm taking your time. And a lot of people don't value people's time anymore. You know what I'm saying? So that's when you got to start valuing your time and say, no, my, my time costs. Um, no, nah, I'm not interested. Nah, because why would I waste my time with a guy I barely know to go somewhere that I barely don't go? And then you talking about, I got to pay? Bruh, please. So what I would do going forward, any lady is under the sound of my voice, I would start assessing the value of your time. I'm not sitting there saying you put a dollar amount. I just want you to be able to assess the value of your time and think about your time differently and be like, you know what? This person is taking me away from sleep. Uh, rest, taking me away from maybe a class I wanted to go to at the gym. This guy's taking me away uh, from 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 peace of mind. This guy's taking me. No, nah, man, bro. And you want mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I, what I would do is if you get to the restaurant, if you get to the restaurant, this man says, oh, you're going to pay for yours. I will leave that food on the table and walk out. That's why I drive separately. Don't drive in a car with a man because if a man brings you out, you out in the day when that man don't pay, leave him with that food and you walk out, get in your car and drive off. Never let a man know where you stay. Never let a man know where you work. But if a man takes your time and, and, and the dinner's over and he's like, oh, she got her ticket. You leave that food there. This is me talking. Uh, maybe that's not the wise thing to do, but this is what I would tell my daughters, my nieces to do. First off, I'm in the window looking. 
First off, if they want to sneak off and date somebody, I'm like, look, you leave that foot on the table and let him deal with that. Oh, word? You want me to pay? Ma'am, I'm going. What you do is just grab your purse. Maybe maybe, maybe have a clutch purse. It's what you do. Maybe you have a clutch purse. Don't grab nothing the way he looks like you walking out. And just be like, oh, he wants me to pay. What you'll do is, oh, excuse me, I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. No, no, don't even say I'll be right back. I'm going to go to the bathroom. You go, you go right out that door, get in your car and drive off. Leave him with that food. Because that dude's a fool. Simple as that. That's what I'll tell my niece. I'll tell my daughters. And, 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 and if he got something to say, come see me. Simple as that. So if he talking about you paying, looking at you like, would you get your clutch purse? I'm going to go to the bathroom. Okay. Okay. Go to the bathroom. Get right in that car. Drive off. Leave him with the bill. Okay. And, and it is what it is. Coach loves y'all. You know I do. I keep it 100. I'm old school, man. Um and, and um and fellas, well, that ain't gonna really pertain to y'all. I uh, got books and resources for y'all. Got a book called Dating Prep. Got I think I got that I got that question in this book as well. Um, you can get a card game that goes with it. I must have put my card game somewhere else. But Dating Prep is a great great book to date yourself and love your life forever. This is a great book for you, young lady. You can be able to a, a really ask him some serious questions, um, so you won't find yourself in that situation again. If you got soul ties and strongholds, got this book called The Purpose of Freedom, a great resource to kind of help you understand what uh, 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 soul ties, strongholds are and how Christ frees you. A lot of us like this bird in the cage. Freedom is not just the opening of the cage. Freedom is walking in that freedom. So many people, God, Christ has freed you years ago, but you still sit in that cage. God's like, man, I'm walking that freedom that I have allocated and given you. Got his book on spiritual warfare, World War Me, How to Win the War Within. Great book on spiritual warfare with scriptures in the back. I call these bullets to fill your chambers with so you can be able to fight the enemy. Uh, oh, here go the dating prep card game. There, right there. Cool card game there. <clears throat> All that's on my website. Got my first children's book, as he says, as for the students I serve. Um, great book, great resource here uh, for kids, third graders and up. Um, my, the purpose single in this book are you whole or full of holes? Great book for singles. Uh, and anybody who wants to just really be whole, great principles in here, even if you're in a relationship or married, great principles for you to really think about am I whole or am I full of holes? And am I leaking all over this relationship? And my first book that I ever wrote is called Unplug Top Things to Unplug. My very first book, man, very, very proud of, uh, very, very um, proud of that book. Um, but uh, let me see if I got my website here so you can kind of see other things. Um, here we go. If you want one-on-one -on -one coaching, oh, website here, I am unplugged.com is where you can find everything about me. If you're looking for worksheets that you haven't found, you can search for them there. Um, you learn more about our kids mentoring program. My wife and I's mentoring program. These are actually kids we mentor. This is a school that I work at. Um, and then kids we mentor there. Uh, online courses. We got three courses, a uh, course on procrastination, course on insecurities, and a course on singleness. Uh, we got this where you can get your books, uh, get t-shirts, get merch. We got uh, our own shirts and whatnot. Also, if you want to book me for a speaking event, you got that there. Donations, of course. You want to, If God leads you to donate, we'll greatly appreciate it. And if you need one-on-one -on -one coaching, cards game as well, one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, we got multiple kinds of forms of coaching. Um, just simply just look through it and go book a session. And write your name, email, uh, what coaching pertains to you that you read through the descriptions. Write your budget for the session, what you're able to do. And from your budget, I'll customize a coaching session. If I have times and slots available based upon your times and slots, and I would love to help you guys and gals. And make sure I don't got any more super chats. I forgot people will, people give you super chats, but they got questions. And I don't want to be disrespectful. Uh, thank you so much for giving. Uh, tw two or $20. Don't even matter how much it is. I really appreciate it. Make sure I ain't skip nobody else who had questions within Super Chats. Uh, thank you so much. God bless you, too. Okay, we're good. I think we're good. I think we're good. I think we're good. Uh, God bless you, Coach. Thank you for being a kingdom voice. You're welcome, Melissa. Thank y'all. Love y'all. Uh, see y'all next time. Uh, I think that's it. Peace. See y'all next time. Probably tomorrow. I won't do any daily plays this week. Uh, full, I had a full week last week, and so now I'm kind of just um, getting kind of back adjusted. So I'll probably do a live tomorrow at noon, um, uh, noon Eastern Standard Time. Do another, um, me and BD will be live on Tuesday at 9 p.m. So you'll be getting a bunch of lives from me this week. Um, love y'all. See y'all next time. Peace.